It's uh, been a while since I've done one of these but I had a special request last night and although I'm not such a fan of my voice um, if listening to one of my stories brings comfort to some people uh, that brings me a lot of joy it is the purpose of writing for me anyway to bring comfort to myself and to others so here it goes this is for you you know who you are let's go to the story to one of the requested stories um, so I'm going to read under the apple tree this is a story from the collection whispers and other strange stories and it, it's been a while since I've read this piece well it's been a while since I've fully reread all the stories so it's gonna be interesting so page 65 Under the apple there are very few things I'm scared of in this life. Unlike other people, I am not scared at the sight of spiders, no matter how large they might be. I am not scared of pigeons or other birds plucking my eyes and eating them like in a Hitchcock movie. At least, I don't give much thought to that kind of stuff you see in horror movies. I am not scared of flying in an airplane or of heights. I am not scared of running into a burning building. Somehow, I don't know how or why, I am not scared of dying. I am only scared of the pain which I assume comes just before the passing. I do, however, have two great fears that often haunt my dreams. I am afraid of someone hating me intensely and expressing that hate. I am afraid of someone physically and verbally abusing me. It makes me shake. It makes me sick. When my grandmother died, I was four. I remember sitting in the back of the truck by her dead body and wondering why all those people were crying and following us. She was dead. I knew that and I understood and I understood there was some ritual to be taken care of to take her on her last ride. My cousin was in a truck with me as well. She was younger than me and cried a lot. I remember briefly her runny nose and her small hands. Her face contorted by the realization that something other than life exists and is here to take the ones she loves. Nothing was going to be the same again. Her joyous countenance saw a piece of her break that day, chipping and scratching at her insides. My grandmother's skin was covered in spots of sickly yellow and purple. Her feet were swollen, the veins in her legs were clogged with blood, and I could see the purple-black outlines bulging out, almost coming out of her, crawling out. She never liked me. She hated me, in fact. Or maybe she hated my mother. Therefore, she hated what my mother created, me. After we laid her to her eternal sleep in the ground, we came home. I imagine we had tables set up in the yard, and people from the village came to have wine and stuffed wine leaves to honor her and say their goodbyes. This is the usual ritual for honoring the dead in my country. But I don't remember that taking place. As I mentioned already, I was only four. I don't remember much now. It 
24 or so years late. Days after her burial, I was certain that the room in which her body lay that last day was haunted. I was almost certain she was still inside there, waiting to catch me and give me a beating if I dared to enter. I still remember her hands bound in silent prayer, her feet tied together as if not to go running and hunting the living. She was clearly dead. Worms probably crawled on her body and ate from it by now, but this didn't stop me. I avoided that room in which I last saw her, like the plague. After her death and her burial, I often walked on the cracked cement alley which leads from my grandfather's kitchen to the gate and the road to go and visit my older cousin. But as soon as I got near that part of the house with that room, from which I felt she was watching me, I would swerve a large half circle in front of it and run towards the gate, pulling it hard to open it as fast as possible and run away from whomever could be following me, whoever could be trying to grab me, to catch me. You see, me and my grandmother, we used to play a game. I would hide and she would, she would try to find me. You may think this was cute if it wasn't for the fact that she was looking to give me a beating equal to death. I don't know why she hated me so much. I don't know why I think she did. After all, I only remember her hating me only in one instance. But I remember hiding from her behind an apple tree in my cousin's yard and praying to God not to let her find me. My heart beat, beat fast, almost bursting from my chest. I looked at the yellow apples and held tight to the tree trunk. Please don't let her find me, please. I prayed and prayed. The moment only lasted a few seconds, maybe minutes at most. She walked in the yard and chatted to my grandfather's sister. She asked where I was. I shot up from under the yellow apple tree with its grand panoply of thick green leaves and rushed through the cracked gate. The, wheel, the wood squealed when I pushed it and she heard me then. I ran as fast as I could, but her wooden whip still caught my legs and part of my bottom. They turned red instantly. I shrieked and burst into tears, more from fear than pain. She bruised me. She haunted me on the road as I ran back home, calling me names I will not repeat here, names which no young child should hear or have had been their target. She is dead now, and while I, feel, while I feel sorry for my father's pain, his loss, I am relieved and I breathe a little bit freer. But even now, after all these years, when I go to visit my grandfather, I still remember those dark days when my grandmother's ghost haunted me. And I fear she might still be in that room, still waiting. I almost jump off the cement alley to step on the grass. I almost half circle the front of the building to avoid locking eyes with the ghost of a woman with an iron grip. And then I remember, I'm older now and I don't believe in ghosts. Behind the yellow stained curtain and the dust covered glass, I think I see a face with gray hair, black purplish hands, and I imagine her thick swollen feet running towards me. I rush to the gate and close it behind me. I embrace my grandfather, kiss him on the cheek, and tell him I'm in a hurry to catch the bus. Because ghosts don't exist, and ghosts don't come crawling out from the past without asking for permission, like the grey-haired one waving from the window be my, behind my grandfather's kind face, turning her goodbyes into a fist and clenching her teeth, crunching them at me, snapping and twisting each bone in her undead body. Ghosts don't exist, not like this one. I hope you enjoyed the reading.